when, come when, to terms with the fact that you're sending NC State to the Final Four for the first time since 1983? Nah, it usually takes like a day to set in. Honestly, with all this stuff, you know, even the, the ACC thing, you know, it just takes a second. It'll be there soon. Describe this journey, what it's been like, you know, to just, I mean, not the best uh, best of finishes in the regular season, and now you're one of the last four teams playing in the country. Again, like my coach said, um, in March you have a clean slate, and we just, we've been taking advantage of every single moment. Does it feel like this team has the attitude of you just can't lose? I mean, other teams, you're not playing other teams, they're playing. You. It feels like that at this point. We would say, um, still humble about it, but yeah, it's starting to feel that way for sure. There were so many coaches that, that looked over me. Um, like you could name a program, I can name a coach that looked over me. Um, the Tennessee, Rick Barnes is a great coach, but he, he was in a bunch of our practice, looked over me. Like it, it's kind of been the story of my life. People have doubted me, people look past me, and can't do that anymore. But I'm talking about Zach. Name names. Oh, we call we call them we out. Naming names. <laughs> name so many coaches, names. like you know, like Rick Barnes, for example. Like the guy. The guy we, just gave we just, forty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just played Tennessee. You know, <laughs> the guy just you heard of Rick Barnes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that was great. That's good. That was great. Um, great stories. Great stories. Zach Eady's a great story. Uh, NC State. Back in the Final Four for the first time since the Jim Valvano uh, days, since '83, that miraculous run in '83. NC State was 17 and 14 as of March 9th, and we know how close they were to losing in the ACC semifinal. Now they run into back of road. Um, Alabama in its first ever Final Four. Let somebody else have something. Um, and of course, there's UConn. Ain't giving nobody anything. I ain't giving nobody nothing. Uh, UConn is, is, is a buzzsaw. Uh, it's like the UConn Invitational. I don't know if anybody can. I don't know if they can. I don't know if anybody can stop UConn. Uh, <laughs> right. It's just, they, they look, they, they're that impressive. And they know it. Uh, and, dude. And, and they co- that coach talk trash. <laughs> the coach knows it. I mean, <coughs> it, it, is, it, is there a way to... Be respectful, kind of humble, yet a trash talker. I think that's what Dan Hurley is. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's, you know, that's, Jersey that's guy. That's a pretty good description. That's a pretty I good mean, description. Like, you're like, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, when we play like this, you know, really, I, I just don't, I think we're going to be hard to beat. I just don't see anybody beating us. <laughs> Respectfully. Like, I, I okay. mean, I, honestly, I just, I just need somebody to keep it close. Just keep it close. You know what I mean? Just make it interesting down the stretch. You know, um, they, they feel inevitable. They really do. But I'll tell you, the one that, that the way you started, though, you know, that first set, that the first stories. clip of DJ so Burns. So many good stories. D- oh, yeah, Burns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. DJ Burns Jr. Like, out of all these stories, because they're all, you're right, they're all good stories. I was and about Purdue, to ask you, what's the second, what's the second best story? Because it feels like NC State's, I mean, you got a team going, you know, trying to repeat. You got Purdue for the first time in 44 years. You got Alabama for the first time ever. But it feels like, you know, Michael Holly, the columnist at the Boston Globe, you're sending Michael Smith to one of these other teams. <laughs> you're writing about DJ Burns. You just, you're camped out at DJ Burns' podium. Exactly. In DJ Burns. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I'm in on DJ Burns. I'm in on. I'm in on dad, like going to, you know, point, you know, dad doing this, you know, during the game. I mean, it's just, you can't, you can't watch DJ Burns for five minutes and not smile. That guy, that's a fun guy. That's just a fun guy to watch. He's a fun guy to watch play. He's a fun guy just to, there should be a DJ Burns camera. Just watching him interact with people during the game. He ain't got a podcast yet. Nowadays, everybody got. I mean, he got a podcast yet. He's got, he got to. a show. Where's He's so guy? expressive. Where's his, where's his streaming show? You know, it's got to have something going. I mean, he's so much fun. Maybe and he got one, as I you just said, man, seventeen and fourteen, seventeen and fourteen at the beginning of this month, and they got to win. They got to win five games in five days to win the NCAA tournament. I mean, to win the uh, ACC tournament, and they do it. So they get into the tournament, and uh, you know, first game's easy, second game's in overtime, 
And then they just start, they start to build confidence. And you look at Burns, the last game, like if, for people who haven't been paying attention to this team, they're hard to figure out. Last game, DJ against Marquette, DJ Burns had four points. He just had four points against Marquette. He comes out against Duke and gives them 21 in the second half, 29 overall. And so they are a team that's just hard to, they're hard to prepare for because they've got a little bit of everything and they're getting that confidence at the right time. I'm not going to say, they, it doesn't make sense that they, they don't match up well with UConn. They don't. But, but I can't say they won't win the whole thing. I'm at that point where I'm, I'm fully in now. I'm fully in on NC State. Okay. They don't match my, up well. My bad, your money? You, you, they you, should you take not. You, you take it NC State? They should not win it. They shouldn't win. More but likely. I think it, they, more likely. Kansas City Chiefs 3 P or NC State National Championship. <laughs> NC State. <laughs> NC State. Look at this. Yeah. They're already dogs. They're already dogs against Purdue. They don't match of up course. well against Purdue. Truth be told. <laughs> but yeah. but Purdue is an interesting story well, I like too. The, I, like the, I like the matchup in the paint. I do like the matchup in the paint. I want I want I want to see how those two uh, how those two bigs go at it. Well, I, there's the some media. really intriguing. There's some intriguing big men in the Final Four. Starting with UConn's, UConn's lottery pick, uh, and then you go down to you know, Purdue, Edie getting 40, and Burns 29. You know what's crazy? Did you hear Burns say who he models his game after? Like who that? If you didn't hear it, did you hear this? No. Who did? Who did he say? I want. I want you to guess because you're like. It, you should. Uh, I'll give you a hint. First of all, he doesn't look anything like the guy he models his game after. He doesn't look like that guy. <laughs> his game does not remind me of that guy's game. He models his game after that guy, and that guy. Here's a okay. hint. Because a lot of people say favorite. Zach Randolph. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He said Zach Rand. He said I have a Zach Randolph body, Got but you. I model my game after somebody else, and it's one, one of, of your favorite, favorite players. In, it's one of your favorite players, an underrated player. When we talk about great centers. That guy is rarely mentioned. People kind of forget how great he was. One of, my one favorite? of your favorites. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I oh, think he's. Oh, oh, is it? Oh, oh, is it my starting center on my all-time starting five? Hakeem Olajuwon. Oh, he's, he's exactly. Olajuwon. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, I, yeah. do you see a? <laughs> he modeled his game after can't Olajuwon. Can't say that I do, but you know, hey, I, I can't so did see I, it. You know, <laughs> it's okay. I mean, <laughs> all right. even I mean, that's you know. fun. Worth a try. Even yeah. that's a fun fact. Yeah, that boy so, was raised right. That's good parenting. But I'm telling, telling you, yesterday, yesterday, I mean, some of the the floater, he's making floaters, and yeah, he's fun. you know, bodying up and ones. I mean, he was just having fun. He's out there playing a game with a smile on his face the entire time. When he's on the bench, he's rooting like he's cheering for his teammates, the the cheering section, the family section. NC State, NC State has brought the fun back to the men's tournament because remember how we started uh, in March. It was, hey, the women, we know more. We're more invested in the storylines for the women. That's the excitement for this tournament. But the men, uh, not so much. Well, I don't think we're saying that right now. I think both the men and women have some very intriguing Took us a while, as Took we us head a while down to get stretch. to know them. Took us a while yep. for the country to get to know him. So, all right, yeah, that that uh, is a nice segue. Um, men's tournament this year is definitely uh, the opening act or the undercard or, you know, at the bottom of the marquee, however you want to put it. Because tonight, put it to you like this, and I'll, I, I say this, I say this uh, tongue in cheek, obviously. Um, Monday night if basketball. We can have, if we could have different, we could have different three-point lines. Can we have a double elimination women's tournament? Because I really don't want to see any of the four teams and their headliners going home tonight. Like, I can't imagine a bigger night, and I'm not even going to qualify. I'm not, because I, I, I was thinking about this earlier. I really want to retire the whole, this is good for the women's game. This is good. Like, 
No, man, like the next the next step in the evolution of the conversation around women's basketball is to stop, uh, you know, doing that uh, patronizing thing of like acting as though the women's basket women's game is new or it's it's a, it's a novel concept or like there aren't there isn't a high level of basketball, a very high level of basketball. And and so and the biggest stars aren't on the women's side. Like, it's good for the women's game. No, it's good for the sport of basketball. Gender aside, tonight is great, is great for the sport of basketball. It is going to be a great hoops night because of the stars. The star power is mm. incredible. Um, make me wish we had a show tomorrow. Uh, but I'm not trying to come to work. But I'm just saying, like, I whatever, <laughs> like, what, what, what was it? Was it 10 million? Was it 10 million people watch the uh, Iowa LSU championship game? Like 9.9, something like that. 10 million people, something ratings. Like tonight, I, I, I would love, I can't wait to see not just the outcome of these games, but the final tally of eyeballs uh, or engagement when it comes to getting, you know, Caitlin and Angel again and Paige and Juju. I, it's like, and that's, that's, just, that's not to slight any of the supporting actors. But those are the rest right. of the Mount Rushmore, if well, you will, of tonight's action. And that's just and that's and that's just the players. We'll get to one of the coaches in particular in a second. Oh, and then meanwhile, here's South Carolina is over here undefeated, just chilling. But it, it, oh, and oh, NC State, too. NC State's women are in it. Like, oh, they're just over there chilling. NC State's women are representing and South Carolina 36 and 0. Uh, but tonight, to, I, I cannot imagine a bigger night. Again, in the women's game in particular, but for the sport in general, when you talk about the star power that's going to be on display in those, in those two games, like, I don't know if it gets any bigger than tonight. With and you all the respect to the actual I mean, I, Final Four at the National no, I, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, you know what's so great about it is that this has happened. I'm going to give the women, um, I'm going to give the women credit <coughs> for making it happen. So, this is this has all been this is all based off of their own popularity, their own advocacy of what they have and who they are. So a lot of a lot of these women, I'm just talking about not just college basketball, but I think uh, the WNBA has to be uh, rolled into this conversation too, because a lot of the professional athletes in the WNBA have done a good job of setting the tone for hey, this is how this is how we roll. This is how we move. If we see something that we like, we speak about it. If we, some, if we see uh, something that we don't like and it's a cause, we take up the cause. This is what we do. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a, a global issue. It could be, hey, I'm going to wear what I wear. I'm going to model. I'm going to sing. I'm going to be, I'm going to wind up here. I'm going to, I'm going to be visible about it. I'm going to have it on social media. I got a great following. I've got, I'm showing people my personality. So I think professional uh, WNBA athletes have done that. College athletes have done that so well that there is a following. There's a following of people who just watch women's basketball. And then there's a following of those, uh, those like us who like men's basketball, women's basketball, and, and recognized how great the product is. So give yeah. them credit for getting it to this level. It wasn't by accident, and it didn't come from the networks. The networks didn't create it. That, that media, mainstream media didn't create it. It definitely, just kind of, it was like a groundswell. Roots. Yeah, yeah, it was a groundswell, sure. and no. it kind of got us to this point. No, so but, I like no, that. Sure. And that being said, yeah, a lot of great storylines, not a great, but story Caitlin right. versus Angel is the one I'm. I'm, I'm here for that. That's what I want to see. That's what I, I, I want to see. see. I don't want to <laughs> see it end. I don't want to see. That's all. I, was, I mean, somebody got to go home, unfortunately. And, and you know, just Paige just come back has been incredible. Juju's rise has been incredible. But of course, you know, uh, the rematch. Is one and, and then we it's like who, I guess if I got? had to like who am I so who am I who, who I got oh man who am I I'm, who am I rooting for ah oh, who am I I'll, I'll tell you what I'm rooting for I'm like I'm because like, I, I who okay, you rooting for I guess, let me see okay so the only reason I mean I I I'm a I'm a New Orleans kid I'm a Louisiana kid and I, I love Angel uh, I love I love the whole team um, 
But I, I want to see LSU South Carolina. So I'm ho- I, I want to see that rematch too. So I, I, w- I want to double my pleasure when it comes to rematches. So that's, that's why I'm going to take LSU um, more than anything. Um, and on the other side, I'm going to say it's Juju's time. I'm going to say it's Juju's time. I'm going to go with Juju. Okay. I'm going to go with Juju. Although, yeah. although Paige, Paige's comeback has been incredible. And, I, and that's always cool when, when two schools, because that'd be cool if UConn was in it, in, was in, was in, it on, in both Final Fours, men and women again. But U, UConn, UConn's had their time. Like this resurgent USC program, the more we can exactly. like go back to Cheryl Miller and Lisa Leslie and the torch being passed to, or, 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 or being lit again by Juju Watkins uh, in that program, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with USC. I, again, we root for the stories, man. We root for the stories, and they're all great stories. They're all great stories. But LSU South Carolina rematch is, is too tantalizing to not root for. Um, and, I'm, and I want to see more of Juju. Um, I know. With the, I know with South Carolina. Page and Gino. See, I, somebody I know is South rooting Carolina for LSU. Is, Take that, LA Times. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, look, look. I know South Carolina is undefeated, but they they're not undefeated in a uh, UConn NCAA tournament type of way. Not that they've just blown away teams. Uh, mm-hmm. They've been challenged a couple of times. Uh, it's been close. You know, almost blew a 22 point lead the other night. Then they were uh, they they wound up winning that game by like I think four or five points. So I know they're undefeated. They haven't blown teams away. However, I'm going with South Carolina. I, I like this. When we get to the final, I'm just looking at oh, the you skip it to the final. Okay. Okay. So I'm just saying just like when we get to the uh, like uh, the final four. You look at the, the ones are going to be represented. So Iowa versus LSU. I think Iowa was a better team. I think Iowa's better. You know that like Caitlin and Angel aside. I think Iowa's better. So I'm gonna go with Iowa. Uh, USC versus UConn. I think USC is better. Uh, UConn has had some moments. They, they've bounced back lately. We've had some moments during the season where we so, we've been so spoiled by UConn over the years that, you know, even getting to this point, losing here, there's some people in stores. Be like, what? Stores, Connecticut. We didn't get to the final four. What's wrong? <laughs> okay. Nothing's wrong. You're a good program, but USC right now. Uh, is better team, so I, I'm going with USC. I'm going with USC, and going with Iowa tonight. Well, I know one thing. I know one thing. Either way, uh, we can't lose. All right, whoever, whoever wins, whoever goes home, we can't lose. Like I, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get two classic matchups. They're gonna have everybody talking uh, tonight and tomorrow. It's gonna be a huge can't wait. night for sport. Huge night for sport. <laughs> You know, it's real distinguished when you, when you say it in a singular for sport. Capital S. Sport. And for the game. I, I, I ain't distinguishing between men and women. For the sport of basketball. For the game. A great night for the game. All right. Uh, let's take another break. Um, and then we're going to get into uh, the star. <laughs> Look, like it or not, we paying attention to it. She's a star. She's a star. Kim Mulkey is a, sc- a star. She is. And, uh, we, we didn't even talk about her. There'll be a lot of eyes no on her. No question. A lot of eyes and ears on Kim Mulkey at all times. And there were some things in this commentary, guys, that you should be offended by as women. It was so sexist, and they don't even know it. It was good versus evil in that game today. Evil? Called us dirty debutantes? Take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. Dirty debutantes? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. It was even sexist for this reporter to say UCLA was milk and cookies. Now, you women sit there and you keep your mouth shut if you want. I'm in the last third of my career, but I'm not going to let sexism continue. 
And if you don't think that's sexism, then you're in, in denial. We do have a lot of black women on this team. Um, we do have a, a lot of people that are from different areas. And unfortunately, you know, that, that bias does exist still today. And a lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist um, towards my teammates. And, um, you know, I'm in a unique situation where um, I see with myself, you know, I'll talk trash and I'll get a different reaction than if Angel talks trash. And so it, it's really up to me to, you know, uh, it's not up to me, but I have a duty to my teammates um, to have their back. Um, and obviously, you know, some of the words that were used in that article were very sad and upsetting. And that type of description of us isn't always motivating. I think, you know, um, calling us basically the dirty debutantes, like, that's, that's, that has nothing to do with sports. Mike, you called her, uh, you called her a star uh, a few minutes ago, talking about Kim Mulkey, LSU head coach. She is a star, and whether you are a Kim Mulkey fan or not, you always show up to hear what she's going to say, to see what she's going to wear, uh, just to be, a, be in the midst of a conversation that she's going to start. It's going to be a provocative conversation more often than not, uh, and sometimes she raises some points that, we disagree with, and in some cases, like here, when she was talking about the LA Times report, I agree with her completely. Yeah. Uh, the you're article, right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, like really, exactly. She right. got it right on that. She was totally right yeah. on the LA Times article, um, and and we'll talk offline, Mike. Uh, when I first saw it, uh, I wonder if you. <laughs> that shame on me, though. Shame on me, because now I'm gonna get myself in trouble. But when I first saw the article, I'll say I put it this way: when I first saw the article. And I saw mm. the quotes from it. I said, Ugh, okay, I think I may know who did this. It was not the person I thought of. So, okay, oh, okay. it was not okay. the person I thought wrote it, but it okay. was, it was silly. It was not written. It was not informative. Uh, and this is somebody who covers UCLA. Ben Bowles, he covers UCLA. He used to cover the Clippers. Uh, he's been yeah. covering sports for a long time. He's old enough to know better. So it didn't, it doesn't read like someone who was really invested in the beat. It is just so, um, uh, it, it was just so, actually, actually I was, not really. I, well, well, you thought it was real quick. Just I too invested. I thought it read. It was like, it was, it was, it read like somebody who, first of all, it okay. read like it had a local, it had a local tone Fan. for a national paper. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it, like, yeah, yeah. Was it when you try to rile up to rah, rah. Base, like, a little, little too, like, a little too much of a homer, you know, uh, a yeah. little too, yeah, it felt, he felt too invested uh, in this game and as opposed to being an, object, an objective, unbiased uh, reporter. He was so trolling. She was right felt about like somebody that. on Twitter, what? felt like somebody on Twitter got a chance to write for the LA Times. You know, <laughs> exactly. Just kind of took times, over, man. Yeah, which is so the real LA villain times. in this, by the way. R the real villain in this is the LA Times. But continue. So, well, the LA Times, Kim Mulkey is right about. We'll get to the Washington Post in a second, but I do. Before we get to the Washington Post, I want to get your reaction to this because I feel like the Van Lith comments that we just heard there, where she says, "Look, we got a lot of black women on this team. I do some stuff." I do some stuff. I talk trash and it has a different reaction than when they do. Sure. It. Absolutely. Uh, hey, listen, thank you. Thank you. And and this is what I, this is what this is what being a great teammate is all about. Sometimes we need accomplices, when you not are, allies. When, that's, a, that's an okay, accomplice, look, look, not look. an ally. <laughs> hey, look, now I'm just telling you from my experience at being a black person in this country. Sometimes you want other people to notice the obvious. Sure. Like don't don't keep turning around looking at me saying, "Hey, what what you think about?" It? No, what you think about it? What do you think about it? It is, my 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 blackness does not mean that I comment that I exclusively comment on these issues that I know you see, that I know you hear. So We've thank talked about you. this for years. I am so thank tired of being somebody's up. phone call for a racial conversation. Yeah. Like, like that's for the longest time. That's what we were. It's like we got to talk about black. 
Hey, hey Michael, you free? You free? You busy? Like none hey, of you can't listen. have a, car, a, 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 a yeah. intelligent conversation about race, which is which you is why we keep me. having the same conversation because we're the only ones. Right. You don't it. call me any other. You don't call me any other <laughs> right, time. Right. Just want to call about that. Hey man, right. when I like before I before I left, uh, the, I did sports radio as you know. I did sports radio for 13 years in mm -hmm. Boston, and before I left, like the last my last month there. Somebody said something which caused everybody, everybody uh, to go to uh, sensitivity training, racial sensitivity training. Everybody, mm -hmm. okay? Now, I could have taken the, the I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. I knew I was leaving when somebody said something they shouldn't have said. I already had yeah. my next gig lined up. I knew I was going to go. So I was like, I could just ignore this or I can go for the entertainment. So I went for the entertainment. I chose to go for the entertainment. So during this yeah. during this sensitivity training, um, a lot of people there, a lot of white folks there, honestly, mm -hmm. were upset that they were in sensitivity training. They were upset that they were t they had to think about diversity and inclusion and all this. They were just they were angry about it, and they were like, "What what, what do you mean we're not we're diverse?" And I didn't say a word. One of my colleagues, one of my white colleagues stood up. I was proud of him. He stood up and said, why are you guys so angry? Diversity. I see Michael Holly and the rest of us. <laughs> We're not diverse at all. <laughs> so what y'all what oh, yes. talking about? Right. Thank you. Thank you. My work here is done. I appreciate you. But no, really, uh, Van Lith, good stuff. <coughs> Everybody, you're not the only one who sees it, but I'll give you props for being the one who sees it and who speaks it. You articulate it. You articulated it very well, very accurate. Mm. Uh, I'm sure your teammates, your teammates appreciate it, and I can tell you from afar, I've never met the young woman, but I appreciate it too. Now, I'm old enough to you remember. take over on the, uh, you can add anything well, to it, or maybe you want to get to the Washington well, Post. Well, I'll get to that, but I was talking, I was just referencing how, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, white executives or producers would look to us to carry the racial conversation or even white or white hosts who are uncomfortable talking about race or and, and, it, and it wasn't sometimes it was from a place of sincerity and, and, a, and a place and, and I'll be fair. It was from, it, it sometimes it was from a place of sincerity or a place of um, of, of understanding that, you know, that they didn't know. Like, like if like the guy who said diversity is Michael Holly and the rest of us. Some people felt like, hey, I can't have a conversation about race. I'm not black. I can't relate. I don't understand. Right. OK, but the only way the conversation is ever going to evolve is if white people lead those conversations. And, and I'm not saying anything new or groundbreaking. This has been said. Um, and so it often frustrated me, us having to be Having, having to give voice to these issues when others had the privilege of being silent. Likewise, I'm old enough to remember when women were only brought on to sports shows to talk about either women's sports or domestic violence or sexual assault. Mm. That wasn't yeah. that long ago, believe it or not, you know? And so the thing I do want to call out is, and I know she was speaking to the people sitting before her, which I wish I could have had a reverse angle, but when Kim Mulkey said, this language should offend you as women. No, it should offend all of us. Mm. Should offend the yes. men. It offends me. It offends you, Michael. It should offend yep. all of us. And as long and, and just as just as white people have the responsibility of dismantling systemic racism, men bear the burden of dismantling misogyny and patriarchy. Women can't Amen. do it. If they if, if women could Tell do it, they'd have done it already. Woo. If women could do it by themselves, yep. it'd already be done. Okay, and so those conversations, these conversations cannot be the exclusive domain of women. Just as, you know, as many have pointed out, women can't be the only consumers and, and, and enjoyers uh, and patrons and, uh, and, and fans of women's basketball. You know, the, that's, that's where the growth of, of that game comes in. So that would be the first thing is that it's offensive. It's universally offensive what this reporter did. 
the reason I say the LA Times is the, is the, is the real villain here. That shit should have never seen the light of day. Like, if there isn't a full-on internal audit of their editorial processes to where something like that could not only see the light of day, but then the Times got the nerve to publish in 2024. In 2024. Editor's note. Editor's note. The original version of this commentary did not meet Times editorial standards, you think? Oh, it has been edited to remove language that was inappropriate and offensive. We apologize to the LSU basketball program and to our readers. First of all, and if you read the updated version of the story, the premise remains. It's yeah. still the same premise. <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, it's like, it's the same thing, just, just more sanitized language involved. But it's the same premise. But beyond that, yeah. man, like, you yeah. ain't putting that toothpaste back in the tube. You're not, you're not un, un, un ringing that bell. That whistle has already been heard. So, like, what is their process where something like this could even see the light of day? It's, where some editor looked at this presumably and said, "Yep, good to go." Like, this is good. No editor yeah, that I have stuff. ever worked with. No editor, <laughs> exactly. Oh, spot on. <laughs> Nailed it. I think oh, about wow. the stuff. Love it. I think about the stuff Loved it. that that. Loved I think your about the stuff that Ken that Ken Freitas. Used to change a mind. <laughs> Ken Freitas, Bob Duffy. How about Duffy? Bob Duffy. Like these people, like, I mean, are just you taking like, it out? And explain it later. Here? We're taking it out. We're just taking it out. Right. I'll explain even, to you. I ain't got time. We're asking you. We're I ain't got time for your nonsense right now. Who let this see light, light of day? It's out. Who let this see light of day? And again, man, like, listen, I think there is room for criticism or for critique if you want of these athletes, but there's in bounds and there's out of bounds. And this was so clearly out of bounds. So and, clearly and by the way, the line. so egregious, I so did. extreme. Hey, come on. I took Kim Mulkey's advice and I did Google dirty debutantes. Bruh, come on. She's right. I'm a sucker for hey. I'm a sucker for alliteration. You know that. Hey, you know that's my love if language you Google it, But come on, my if guy. If you Google it, like, it goes in a, it goes in a different direction. Let's just say that it goes precisely. in a different direction. Oh yeah, yeah, to say the least. To say the least. No, and I, it's, <laughs> I again, how that got published, is my biggest question. Everybody, whether it's whether it's you know Haley Van Lith, whether it's Kim Mulkey or any people have already said what needed to be said about this. I just would like to know where the real accountability beyond an editor's note and an attempt in 2024 at walking something back that everybody's already seen. I like to know where that where that accountability is or will be or are they just expecting that we'll just forget about it once we start watching the games tonight or and also um, listen, but and, and, and I, I want you to get to uh, you know Malky in a second, but let me just say this. Did it not meet Times editorial standards? Or right, are they mad because the the people Times got pissed and called them not on it? like being called out <laughs> by Kim Mulkey. No, I think it was probably like, more the would, latter. It's probably more would the there latter. have been any was there would there was there any tension in the office? Was there any discussion? Did somebody say I told you I told you I, I called him up and then he he he, he told me that hey, I got to run it. He had a tantrum. whatever it is. Was there anything that happened before yeah. Kim Mulkey to, uh, took the dais and said, hey, that was crazy. Did right. anybody have that conversation? And so if well, nobody well, had well, that conversation, well, who are the Yeah, well, who are they? About, who, what does the news editor, look like? Well, what, but, but, okay, that's and it. this is an ongoing that's conversation in our business. What does the newsroom look like? What does the editorial that's board look it. like? Like what, what are the what are the people on the copy desk? I say editorial board. I mean the copy desk. What are the, what are the people on the copy desk? What is that? What does that make up? What are their perspectives? What are their backgrounds? What are their races? What are their genders? You know, like you talk about diversity. It's like there's uh, there's there people people think of diversity in, in our business is they, they think about it on camera. You know what I mean? The powers that be, they think about it on camera. Off camera, man, do we have far to go? Behind yeah. the scenes, and so in control what is rooms, the in meeting rooms, in boardrooms, what is the standard? Great, What's great the question. Standard? 
Great question. Because it, it didn't meet the standard. It met somebody. What was the pro, what, what's the standard and what's the process for making sure that it adhered to that standard? Because somebody laid eyes on that and said it was okay. Probably more than one somebody. And I would love to know who those people are. And I love answers from them. Because people know to report. That's the thing about, you know, you and I have been growing up in print, understand how the process works. For better or worse, our name is on it. We wrote it. It's our words. We got to be held accountable for it. But there should be checks and balances. There should be safety nets that oftentimes protect us from ourselves. You know? That's right. Most of the so, time, most of the time, yeah. it does happen. Yeah. So this, this, this. Even if, even if this reporter actually thought this, there's an entire institution, a national paper, a supposedly respected paper, that should see to it that this never sees the light of day. They, they have a, they have an obligation to protect the sanctity and, and, and reputation of that paper by saying, hey, man, take this shit somewhere else. You, you're like, this is the LA Times. Like, you know, s- save that for your group chat if you, if, if, if you must <laughs> express those types of sentiments. Right. If you must, you know. As far as the Washington Post, though, conversely, um, I think not only does Kim Mulkey uh, owe the Washington Post and Kim Babb uh, an apology, she owes them a thank you. Because that was a damn good article. Does that mean that uh, a profile, a uh, takeout? It wasn't a hit piece. It wasn't a takedown. It was a what we call a takeout. And for me, I, it was as thorough as it could possibly be without talking to the subject. And you and I talked about how to go about doing a profile of somebody that won't cooperate with mm-hmm. the process. She said, she told us, they've been trying to interview me for ten for two years. Okay? But you know what he didn't do? At least from what I could tell, I didn't see him grind an axe. I didn't see Kim Babb make it personal. I didn't see him let her uh, lack of cooperation, I didn't see him let that affect his reporting and how he framed the article. I thought it was balanced. I thought it was fair. There was, there was nothing surprising there were some problematic things. We all we know what they are. You know the the way she dealt with gay players or uh, just some of her tactics, uh, to name a few. But nothing surprising. Nothing that we didn't expect to know about Kim Mulkey. But it was also very revealing. Her her family dynamic. Yeah. That agree. was very informative when it comes to how she deals with Brittany Griner and other players uh, in her program and how and how she's moved over the years. How she deals with the media. Uh, I, I said last week when we talked about. The article coming out, I talked about leadership being lonely. I thought it was fitting that the last image of the of the of the piece was her walking through the tunnel alone. You know, um, it was very well done, and I'm not, I'm sure she wasn't happy or pleased with everything that was included in it. I'm sure if she had her way, it would have been one sided in the opposite direction. It was fair. Right, it right. was balanced. It was thorough. It was a revealing, though not surprising, look at a very complicated and complex figure um, who has her, her, uh, her supporters and has her critics, as anybody that's done anything has. So for a that long was much time, ado especially about, doing it for as long as she has. For as long as she has. Talk about much ado right. about nothing. Her going in on the Washington Post, because there, they, they, there can't be anything that's libelous or lawsuit worthy. Because all, all, the, all the I's were dotted, surprise, surprise, and T's crossed by an institution like the Washington Post. And in fact, most of the information, not most of it, a whole bunch of the information came from her. Came from, came from her. Or came her from B, book, her memoir. Yeah. Or, or Brittany, memoir, Gr- Brian, yeah. Brittany Griner's memoir. Or other, like, yeah, yeah. It was sourced. It was perfectly and accurately sourced. So, she'll, I mean, she'll never own up to the fact that, that she, you know, that she went too far. But I enjoyed the piece. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I really enjoyed the piece. I thought it was very well done. Okay, journalistically, yes. Journalistically, yeah. I'll get back to that. Journalistically, yes, I, I did enjoy it. But I, I, I'm going to tag on to that in a second. But I just thought about journalistically, this. Journalistically, that's, that's and, what I'm talking about, yeah. Ch- challenge, me, challenge me on this. I don't think there's anyone, because like Kim Mulkey has some problematic behaviors. There's no question about that with some of their players. Right. Uh, some of the comments How that she, she handled makes to COVID. them. Hey, why? Yeah, what wait, you know, why do you dress like a boy and you know, we can't right. have that at this, you know, uh, we can't have that at this institution or, you know, keep right. that quiet. I don't want keep you to bring it up yourself. Yeah. And even when yeah. people say that 
even when people say that, they don't understand how pr- they think they're being evolved and enlightened when they say that. Hey, well, why we got to talk about it? Well, okay. Well, sure. when we go to a, a, a work function when there's a, a family picnic, bring your kids to work day or bring your kids to the picnic and I come with my wife and my kids. You don't say keep that to yourself, do you? I'm, I'm yeah. pretty much putting... I'm putting my sexuality out there, aren't I? When I and I say, I'm bring, I'm hey, I'm bringing I want to whole introduce you to, to my work, wife, aren't I? Yeah. And, and these, but because and it these doesn't align with are your kids. value system, it's problematic. Yeah, yeah of course. So yeah. you don't say keep that to yourself. But when somebody yeah. does something that you don't agree with, hey, hey, why, why yeah. we got to talk about it? Because it's, it's me. Hypocrisy. Because it's yeah. me. All right. Why are you putting yeah. that all in my face? <laughs> you know, right. So what am I supposed it's to interesting. challenge? Right. So no, but not that part. Challenge oh, me. Oh, I was about that. to say, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, no, I was gonna say, I, like, she's got her problematic behaviors. What I was gonna get to is that, yeah, that, that there are coaches. I can't think of a singular. I can't think of a single great coach who is not, who doesn't have a very structured, very challenging, make you uncomfortable in yes. the game itself. The game itself. Yes. Value system. Yes. Yes. I don't think. I don't think there's who's a gonna great find, coach who's who going to find like, your limit and then push you past it. Yes, absolutely. And then who's all and of whose them players and, are going to swear by her because I mean like I would I wonder that's the what through line of great coaches. I wonder what Reese sport. and Van Lip and Johnson. I wonder what they would say. I, I, I'm sure I'd have to wonder. It's probably all on record, but privately even about what Kim Mulkey has meant to their careers or go back to or it's go back fascinating. to absolutely. Absolutely. It's fascinating to me Absolutely. that on one hand, it, it's like I could feel I could feel the judgment and the chill of Kim Mulkey, especially at Baylor, you know, mm-hmm. a very like this, this Baptist institution that defines marriage in a certain way and relationships in yep. a certain way. And if you don't feel that way, I feel the chill of that player who's got a who's got a function in that environment on one yep. hand. So that's don't like that. But I'm also fascinated by the, the, the detail of, hey, she grabbed that same player, grabbed the jersey <laughs> and said, if you can get past this point, if you can push mm-hmm. past this point, you'll be an All-American. Mm-hmm. Woo! Oh, man, that's motivation. <laughs> that's motivation. That gave me chills right there. Like, okay, I don't yeah. think I can go any further than this, but you think I can. Let's see if yeah. I can get there. And she did. She did get there. She did become an All-American. So I think there are she- a lot of coaches like that. We were talking about the yeah, dynasty yeah. earlier, Bill Belichick. Some of his players yeah. didn't like his tactics, but he had a structure. Right. He had he had a system, and the system the worked. The story and brought, is, a, brought in. They get results. They get results, yeah, but at what cost? Championships. Okay, yeah. now this is what. Here's my pushback on what you said about the the story, Kim Mulkey. I wouldn't be given an apology from 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 my position as a, a journalist. Well, she did him a, well, she a also did him a favor. She also did him a favor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. She yeah, did. Yeah. Right. Which we, we talked about. Journalist, right. yeah. professor, well done. A work. If I'm Kim Mulkey, yeah, I'm really uncomfortable with it. Because if I haven't talked to my father in 30 plus years, and I haven't talked to my sister in many yeah. years, why would she talk you bring to me? This stuff, <laughs> and you bringing this stuff up again? I know I brought it up before. I know Thank I brought you. it up. Well, wait a minute. Stop right there. It's public domain. Number one. Number two. Yeah. Her fa- her father talked and her sister talked. I know. So wait a second. So so that and it's also again very enlightening no, and informative be- about how she moved because it's like okay if you're not talking to your own because father and your sister then we know who you who else you'll cut off if necessary. So that's I right. It, I mean. I, but it wasn't it, it wasn't replaced a judgment. I wasn't I that's wasn't what I'm reading saying. that right. So that's isn't that the job of the reporter to inform and that and those anecdotes, the those reporter, aspects of Kim Mulkey informed me about who she is as a person. The reporter and a coach did his job. The reporter did that's his it. job in it in an excellent way. But if I'm if, if I'm not saying I do it, but I understand Kim Mulkey. I understand. Yeah, I understand why she was Okay. I'm comfortable with that well, thought. No, it could have. Okay. It could have been. Okay. It could have been a number of things. It could have been, uh, the player saying, "Hey, she didn't respect my humanity." That could have made her uncomfortable. She didn't know where that was going to go, or 
she got uh, she got a tip that he did talk to her father talk and to her, her family. Sister. Yeah, sure. And what are they going to say? I haven't talked to him in 37 years. What's he going to say? Yeah, I haven't talked not, to her that's in, from a hit piece. Ex- again, when she's addressed it. Well, when she's I don't know. It, you know, well, listen, I don't I, know. Like I, I said, mean, her, I said, I said earlier, it depends on what there are things I'm sure her preference, her preference would would not have been those, I'm sure that those elements were included in the story. But what I will say is going back to what I was talking about, about like really getting beyond this idea of good for the women's game. Like you can't have it both ways. Okay. The Washington Post did a profile, a comprehensive profile on Kim Mulkey. You can't then say cover us, but only cover us according to the way we want to be covered. Cover us, but only be, only play with kid gloves. It's like, okay, we're going to cover you like the marquee box office attractions that you are. Somebody may right. do a comprehensive profile of you that's going to be balanced, fair, and complicated. The way we're supposed to cover all athletes. We're not supposed to write, uh, you know, uh, milk and cookies Flowery. story yeah, about yeah. Kim Moki when you are a complicated right. figure, when you have run, yeah. rubbed some people the wrong way or, do, or done things that are problematic. He still gave her her props. So all I'm saying is like, if she wanted to control that narrative, she could have easily participated in the interview. She chose not to. He did his but job, even if she had which controlled is to that, cover her fairly. That was all he was obligated to do. Even if she had participated, if she had participated, he st- she still wouldn't have controlled the narrative. So I think that's the I think the problem is that's fair. that she was not no, in control. Fair. You got to it. Right. She wasn't in control. And I and, and I just think just to be even more fair, look, I, I haven't cut off anybody in my family, but if I'd imagine if I hadn't talked to somebody for ten years and a reporter reaches out to them. Yeah, I could I could I might be a little nervous about what that person is gonna say, especially since sure. I'm not gonna come in to correct any kind of yeah. stories. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, and, and that's you, know, you know what else it did. And again, I, I, like there were some uncomfortable problematic flat out uh, damning accusations when it came to her character. But you know what else this article succeeded in accomplishing it humanized her it humanized because who among us does not have complicated family dynamics. Not to say yeah. you've cut somebody over. I've cut somebody out. Not say it again, That's preacher. Like, like that say it is again. Like universal. It's universal. Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't just enjoy the story from a journalistic standpoint. I enjoyed it because it was a complete story. It was complete. It was like it. It, it had her flaws, her strengths, her highs, her lows, her critics, her cheerleaders, all of it. Nine out of ten, at your age, and with your uh, accomplishments, this is still like a hit for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, not very long, not very long. Um, I'm on the other side, obviously at a hill, so uh, I'm not gonna play another 21 years. That's the damn show, sure, but uh, not very long. Um, I don't know what uh, when that door would close as far as my when I retire, but I don't have much time left. What's he saying there, Michael? What's LeBron saying? I don't have much time left. I don't have much time left. Next year is the last year. It ain't gonna be this year. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just not. It's just not. That's not happening. That's not happening. For the so, it it has to be a celebration. It's a production. We know that. So, ain't no surprises. Ain't no announcements. It's not gonna be like Michael Jordan coming back from baseball. The old the school facts. facts. Yeah. I'm back. No, I'm out. No. Next year. Next That's what year. They say. Last year. Age okay. 40. Age okay. 40 season. Uh, he'll be done. I think what he's saying, and this goes back to, you know, remember when he talked about he doesn't want a farewell tour because he doesn't like attention? And we collectively <laughs> yeah. laughed, collectively yeah. laughed. I think what he's saying is appreciate this while you can. Um, I love when he left the court in Brooklyn to a standing ovation and he came and he did his like, you know, his little crown celebration. Yeah. I think he's saying like, well, first of all, he was asked. He was asked. 
And his yeah. answer, well, there was nothing problematic about his answer or, or nothing no. off-putting, I should say, about his answer. He said, hey, I don't, I don't know. He, I think it's obvious, stating the obvious, that we know he's not going to play another 21 years, that he's closer to the end than he is the middle or the beginning. That's obvious. But I think what he's really saying, I think what re- reading between the lines is, hey, I don't have much time left. And, you know, give me my flowers while I'm, while I'm here. Or it, it shouldn't take a farewell tour for y'all to celebrate me. Uh, well, understand what you're, well, wi- understand what you're witnessing. Understand what if you're witnessing. saying that, come on. Who understand hasn't? what you're witnessing. Man, I would say, who hasn't given LeBron his flowers? Who gets who it, grow, who the, grows the flower, tired of flowers? The, who grows the, the tired flowers, of flowers? The florists have been working constantly for 21 years. The flower shops are empty. <laughs> we don't, we're out of stock. We don't have roses anymore. <laughs> like, here's, here, here, here's, here's, one, here's, one, here's one area that could use another bouquet. This, this little area could All use right, another let's bouquet. Hear. Let's hear his it. evolution. His evolution. I'm old enough to remember packing the paint and saying we'll live with him shooting. Like the evolution from why won't he get his big ass down on the block? Yeah, to becoming whenever he feels like it, the best four four man in the league at, at one point, yeah. whatever he felt like, you know what I mean? And obviously played a lot of has played a lot of center, a lot of small that's ball yeah, that's good. center as the game has evolved. The shooter yeah. that he is like Michael, if you'd have told me in 2006, that at 39 years old, LeBron would make nine out of 10 threes. I'd have been like, well, did they shorten the three point line? I, right. I, I was like, is it, is, I was like, where, 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 the fact he's not, he ain't gonna be mistaken for Steph Curry. But LeBron evolving into a knockdown shooter from distance is one of the great accomplishments of his career. LeBron taking what his kryptonite and turning it into a strength by the time it was all said and done to me doesn't get enough celebration like the, fa- maybe, the fact maybe that he doesn't, is a but I'll tell you what never seems what's to amaze me given how he started I tell you what's overstated what cuz we saw that sign LeBron James first of 40,000 points when he says and this is comical too I mean, look, I, I mean, he's a secure dude, but he just needs you to know he he likes to hear. He likes to like, like, like talk, like talk that good stuff to me one more time. Like, like, like say it again. Say it again. He likes, he tell likes me, the tell applause. Me more. He likes the word. He likes the verbiage. Yeah, tell me more. Exactly. Tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. When he says shooting, like, that's not even the best thing I do, bruh. Not. You score forty thousand points. Which Bro, is you crazy. like to shoot. Like you like no, dude. You like to shoot though. You like to shoot. Don't tell me. Like we're not talking about. No, he didn't um, say he doesn't like to. He said it's not well, the best thing he does. It is. Yes, I it think is. That, that that's He's another. That's another feather. He's a in his great cap. score. That He's a great all-time score. leading scorer. Who's He's a great score. He's all-time leading scorer, and that's not the primary part of his game. That is the primary part of his game. I'm gonna tell you that's the primary part of his game. You got no. 40,000 points. That's the primary part of your damn game. You like scoring. Now, a is he the best shooter? No, he's is he like, the best no, shooter likes, I've ever seen. He likes making the right play. He like it. it, it uh, no, I will not let you. And take sometimes this from the LeBron. right play is going to the basket. And scoring. Right. I will not let you take this from LeBron. Like LeBron, you, you know this. We're both old enough to remember him being criticized for passing when we thought he should have shot the ball. So. Right. He, he's always he's been I wouldn't I won't say a reluctant score, but he would rather pass than score than shoot. I think that's fair to say he'd rather pass than shoot. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that after 40,000 40,000 plus no, 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 he, he is. He's not a selfish. I'll, I'll get uh, let, let me meet you in the middle and say he's not a selfish player. He's not. He's never been. A, I watch him still and he puts on he puts on a clinic the way he plays basketball is the way now you could teach from you could teach from that. You know, if you're if you're a coach, you teach from some of the decisions that he makes on the basketball court Correct. still. Very Correct. impressive. He's That's not selfish. 
He scores when, because he has to score. But in rather order to win. pass than score. Yes, he would rather pass than score. I think that I, I think that's obvious. I think that's that's, that's everybody knows is that. It? Or 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 what? is that what he wants us to think? Yeah. Is that just good for the brain? Is that just good for the brain? I just go back to the right. <laughs> I just go back to the production. I, I go back to the I production. The production, no, I, that's legitimate. production that's makes legitimate. that hard. That makes that that's a hard legitimate. sell. That makes it a hard sell. What, pro, what production? You mean like Spring Hill? The, you, all those you, points. You all those oh, points. Oh, that you know, production. Oh, okay. It's okay. Yeah. You know, I'd rather sh- I'd rather pass than shoot. Why? Why be shot? Because he wants to. Because he wants to win. Because he wants to okay. win. No, all like right. if if LeBron if LeBron if LeBron were like. Hey, yo, I'm just getting mine. Y'all get y'all's off the glass. I mean, he'd have he'd have 50,000. He might have 60,000. Who knows? Now he wouldn't have won. Man. He wouldn't have gone to 10 straight finals. But I mean, I, but in terms of like, I mean, nobody could stop him from getting to the basket. But like I said, then he added and expanded his game to include a three pointer and be as reliable a three point shooter as he is. Yeah, see, that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's, because that's incredible. I would have you never said foreseen him becoming. Yeah. If somebody said that to you in 2006, you'd be surprised. If somebody said to me in 2010, he'll be, he'll, hey, he's going to play when he's 39. I'd say, yep, I, I'm not surprised. But right. I thought he would be But he be won't like, be one of the best players in the league. Like a role, no, like, I thought like, he like a... Be, you know what I thought he would be like? I thought he would what? be like, I thought he would be like a Carl Malone kind of power player. I didn't, I certainly didn't think he'd be this fast at 39. And this explosive, yeah. This explosive. Yeah. He's explosive. Yeah. Now, right. he's not like where, he where, have where's the, the old man game? Where's the old man game that he's supposed to have well, the, right now? <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> you where know? the old man game is. The old man game comes when you say, hey, can you give us 75 games? No, he cannot. Mm-hmm. He cannot give you 75. He should he's not. probably at he can give you 60, maybe 55 to 60. And, and that's that's the only reference to his age his his stamina throughout the season uh, during the season. He's going to need some breaks or if you don't give him breaks. He will break down. Yeah. No, but he, ha- he has not. He's evolved without slowing down. It just needs more maintenance N- needs more maintenance and more management. But again, that now that's, can I that's common sense to me. Yes. Can I tell the people something before we go? What's you that? asked me before the show. You said I'm going to ask you a question. I said I already know what it is. That's not the question I thought you were going to ask me. Oh, you didn't, you didn't think so, he was going to be that open-ended, neutral, and lean? What's no, he saying? No, here? open-ended, no? <laughs> neutral, and lean. Uh, no. I thought you were going to ask me. Hey, since at 39, he's already had the production that Jordan has had at 39. Do you still are are you going to go down that Jordan? LeBron thing. Are you going to go? Are you going to revisit that again? Are you Man. over that yet? I thought I thought we were going to get through an entire LeBron conversation without invoking the name of Michael Jordan. And here you go. I thought I, you were going to ask me that. We don't need to go there. I, why? You think I, we don't need why? To, why? Am I, pre- why am I that we, predictable? Why are we even going there? Sh- what, what, what does that have to do with about that predict? But I, am I that simple minded that I can't have a I, I'm perfectly capable of having a LeBron James conversation without bringing up Michael Jordan. Okay. I didn't say you were predicting. Every time I start talking, every time I start talking about boxing, <laughs> like, like I you come out your mouth. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing. No. This ain't got enough. I'm, I'm just. I wonder what, what you thought he was really saying last night when he said I don't have much okay. time. So you got him at next. You got him at next year. So plan next year, next year is it? Your farewell. Great. Pageantry and ceremony. Buy your gifts for next season, 2024, 2025. Forty years old. Yep. It's with, Bron- be great. with Bronny at his side, with Bronny playing with him, teammates. 24, with Bronny. 25 season. I mean, okay. just the concerts. Like, like what city will outdo? Like Madison Square Garden. Get ready, MSG. Get ready, Brooklyn. So, yeah, you know, the Lakers. The Lakers are gonna have like m- you know multiple celebrations. But the, some of these East Coast cities, you got to step up your game. Miami, what you got, Miami? The land, you only got one shot. You got one shot to get this right. Do it at Club Club 330, right there on uh, West Market Street in Akron. The place he <laughs> took over. Now he's made his uh, museum. Yeah. 
Yeah, what you gonna I do? A, what you gonna uh, do? There's a related topic that I'll bring up another day um, about another player um, and what his farewell could look like one day if he has one. Maybe that's not his style. That's a tease. We're gonna exit stage left. All right, man. I like that. Always a pleasure. Good to Always see you. Enjoy those brother. games tonight. I'm telling you, we, we watch we watching it as a family. And I don't mean that in a social media way, like we watching it as a family. I mean the Smith household will all be in the living room watching it as a family tonight. That's gonna that's gonna be fun. That's good stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Good family a lot of fun. That's good family fun right there. Absolutely. That's a good time. Good clean wholesome. Enjoy. Good clean wholesome. We can clean, root for both teams. Fun. We can root for and, everybody. And, and there, there may be some cursing. There may be some cursing from the players. Well, as you know, or as you may know, uh, the moment Savannah could drive, she was driving. And uh, mm. I don't think I've ever told my in-laws this, but a little bone to pick, a, bo a bone that I have to pick with them is uh, be careful. I didn't even get a say in it. Careful, I didn't man. even get a say in it. They just gave her a car. I was like, wait, was I going to be consulted on this? <laughs> like, I wasn't planning on giving her her own car that quickly, but as soon as she was able to drive, so I was blessed enough to have uh, grandparents who uh, hooked her up with a car. And so basically she's like a tenant here, you know, more or less, except she doesn't pay rent, comes and goes as she pleases these days, you know, like sometimes, yeah. even, sometimes she, sometimes she doesn't car. even, sometimes she, well, it's not ours, it's hers, right? Exactly. Right. Um, Sometimes she doesn't even let us know that she's leaving the house. We just look up in Savannah gone. Like, okay. Um, and uh, what she doesn't understand, uh, and it's for the same reason that every time she leaves the house, I know it was like this with your parents. Uh, it was like this with Marilyn Holly. Um, it's right. like, you know, be careful. Ma, why are you always telling me to be careful? Well, it's, it's not you I'm worried about. It's everybody else. You know, right. and I just want to see drive. you before you leave the house. You know, That's I'm worried right. about everybody yeah. else. And I, I'm yeah. reminded of that because of the, the people who were on the highway in Dallas minding their business. Minding their business. Uh, when a Lamborghini and a Corvette, uh, the Corvette, I believe, registered to Chiefs receiver Rushi Rice, decided to drag race. Look at this. Uh, and then leave the scene. Yeah, so right. the latest as, as, as of about 1015 Eastern on Monday, April 1st, talk about April Fools, literally. Um, the latest is that Rasheed Rice has retained counsel. Um, and I believe the police are still looking for him. But the latest is that he's retained counsel. First of all, Thank God it wasn't worse. It's was a six vehicle crash. Uh, no fatalities, uh, some injuries, but doesn't seem to be catastrophic yeah. injuries uh, from what we know so far. Um, stupid doesn't begin to describe this. And there were a whole lot of, you know, Henry Ruggs references on social media. And we just finished talking about Brett Reed in Kansas City and him getting that slap right. on the wrist and quite honestly the slap on the wrist that he got uh, is part of the reason in my mind why why there were no there was no fear of consequences in Rasheed Rice's or his friends mind now again we don't know for sure that Rasheed Rice was behind the wheel just in, in the interest of accuracy we don't know for sure that he was the one driving uh, but the, again the car was one of the cars was registered to him um, and uh, the only reason he would need counsel is because he knows he's in trouble. Whether he was driving, not driving, left the scene of an accident, right. regardless, there's some trouble attached to him. Um, but, you know, this is, this is why I tell Savannah to be careful. It's other people. Like, why are we so selfish? Like, why are we so selfish as a society? Whether it's, you know, like, there, there are a few things that grind my gears more than drunk driving and reckless driving. Um, right. Because it's such a selfish act, you know. Um, this just pissed me off. Something serious, man. You know, to watch this kid and these guys, not even kid, this, this, this grown up. And there was a four-year-old kid involved. And again, Brett Reed just 
ch damage the life and forever change the life of a little girl when he got behind the wheel drunk, uh, leaving the facility. And here's where she writes, allegedly, or right. somebody in a car registered to him, drag racing. Um, it's just dumb. And, and the punishment for me can't be harsh enough. Because the reason why it's not going to be harsh enough is because it wasn't worse. If it were worse, if somebody had, God forbid, lost his or her life, they'd be throwing them under the jail, throwing them under the jail, and the league would be throwing the book at him. Now, I know it's still early in the process. Who knows how hard the league comes down on him? But they, not, they can't come down on him hard enough in my mind. Or them, or anybody connected to this can't be punished hard enough. Again, whether he was driving or not remains to be seen. Anybody connected to this can't be punished enough. And too often the punishment does fit the crime. As in, oh, well, you know, since nobody was hurt or nobody was killed, or yeah. nobody was hurt, you know, catastrophically, or nobody was killed, the punishment isn't often all that harsh as opposed to if somebody were, like I said, it'd be a whole different ball game. But yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm blown away at the stupidity involved. And this, and this happens every day. It just, we're talking about yeah. it because it's a professional football player who set a rookie record for receptions in the postseason because it's the defending Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, their number one receiver, wide receiver. Sure, that's why we're talking about it. This happens all the time. But man, I just I just wish people would wake up from this kind of dumb shit, honestly. And because that that could be anybody's family member in any of those other six cars. That could be any one of us driving along, minding our business, and somebody decides to drag race. That could be one of our children in a car driving, minding his or her business, and somebody deciding to drag race. Man, this is just like this is this is disturbing to say the least, Michael. It's disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Even you know, it could have been and, worse. And you mentioned you mentioned. Um, what grinds your gears is drunk driving um, and reckless driving. And I guess we could we, we could put this in the category because this is something that I have to tell myself <laughs> Ooh, not I know to get involved going. in. And you know oh, where I, I live, know. okay? Yeah. You know where yeah. I live. Yeah. You know uh, that there are first cousins. There's a family. If, if the nation has a family reunion, uh, the cities that will be involved at one family reunion will be New York, Boston, and Philly at the same family reunion from the yeah. same DNA, just like a little, a little chip, a little edge. Everybody got a little edge. You walk around, yeah. there's an edge. What? What? You talking to me? What? What'd you say? <laughs> got that little, yeah. that little twitch. <laughs> it's yeah. always, you're always a second away from it. So that's when you walk in the streets. That's when you're on the subway. Now imagine being in a car. And somebody cut you off in traffic in Boston. You know mm -hmm. how it is here. Uh, two mm -hmm. lanes become four lanes. Four lanes become six. People just make up make up rules and make up lanes that don't exist. Everybody's on edge. Everybody's got somewhere to be. Their place, their place they got to go is more important than the place you got to go. So get out the way. You're not driving fast enough. The whole thing. So uh, there are times like on the road where I'm a little annoyed by people and. Now, my wife will say, let it go. <laughs> mm. Let it go. Don't go up. Don't, don't, don't roll your window down and start pointing to people because the thing is, Michael, most of the time, that, that, will, just, uh, that will just end in a, a nice little exchange of profanities. Well, you did this, you did that. Well, you're this, you're that. Okay, that's the end of it. But we've, we've heard some stories how that has become a little fraught, how that has become a little fragile and crazy. And that like sometimes people in these road rage incidents do things that you say, well, how could, how could that happen? What is wrong? What were you yeah. thinking? And a lot of, yeah. in a lot of cases, and I'm not, I don't know where she writes at all, but in a lot of, t a lot of cases, good people are not thinking and they look like a holes. <laughs> they come off that mm. way. You're like, I'm like, how could you put other people in danger? I'm going to give you an example. To a guy who went to, it, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. A guy who went to a school in your neck of the woods, he's from Louisiana, went to Southern, uh, played for the Cavaliers. I met him when he played for the Cavaliers. Mm -hmm, Bobby Phelps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So Bobby, yeah. Uh, what I'm telling you, when I say that this is a, a prince 
of a man, a prince of a man. I mean, just a great guy. Really enjoyed, like had conversations with him far beyond basketball, kept in touch. He left Cleveland. I left Cleveland. Uh, he went off to the, you know, Hornets and played for other teams. I went off to Boston, kept in touch. I'd see him in Boston. We chat about family, um, kids, that kind of, you know, that kind of relationship. But he lost his life after practice speed racing mm -hmm. on a city street I remember, in Charlotte. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay, now, if you told me, if you if you had given me a hundred guesses of somebody who would do something like that, he, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have made the top one hundred. I just sure that just wasn't his thing. <laughs> I didn't see that. And so sometimes it's I, I agree with you. I, I'm not making excuses for anybody. It is no reckless. no no no. I love I love I love where you're going with this. And no, it's reckless. It is, and it's it's uh, it's indefensible. It's inexcusable. But then there are stories. There are sure. stories, there are real stories and people, that are tucked in there. And, and people do dumb things. And honestly, Michael, like, I'm glad you, I'm glad you took it there. I'm actually glad you took it there. It's not where I thought you were going to go. But similar, I'll go down a similar path because at the risk of living in a glass house and throwing bricks or at the risk of, uh, or excuse me, not acknowledging that but for the grace of God go I, yeah. Um, I've been accused of being heavy footed. Now I'm ne I've never <laughs> drag raced. I've never drag raced, uh, in my life. I can, I can say that, but I've texted while driving. Mm. I've texted while driving. Yeah. Does that make me, that make me any better than Rasheed Rice? If I'm, if we're being honest, is that not selfish? If we're being honest, you know, I'm better at it than I used to be. I try to take the phone and throw it in the back seat to just so I don't even get tempted. Um, but when you say remind How about talk myself, to text, you don't talk to text. No, I no, I don't no, I try not to do that either. But I'm saying like, yeah, um, but regardless, I'm saying like, to your point, none of none of us is perfect. You know, um, and people do make mistakes. I think I, I would put drunk driving and drag racing in a different category. Um, but you're right. Yeah, Sometimes too. you can be a good person and do a bad thing that not to excuse it. So no, I'm, I'm glad you put it that way because if, if God forbid I got in an accident tomorrow because I was dis I was distracted driving. I would think I'm a good person who would have done a who would have done an awful thing. Um, and so there is some there is some grace to be afforded to our fellow man and, and, and our, our, our fellow human beings. Having said all that, I guess I just should put the emphasis on the we. Why are we so selfish yeah. when it comes to when it comes to driving? Because it's because like you, you know, that that could have ended in a Bobby Phelps way that could have ended. And again, I know the circumstance were different that like a lot of people were unfortunately referencing Henry Ruggs uh, yesterday. I mean, we've, we've had this conversation before. There's no new things under the sun. Again, right in Kansas City, you got Brett Reed being irresponsible and forever altering the life, the life and lives of a young girl and her family members. Um, so, the, so the punishment can't, the punishment must be severe. It cannot be severe enough. I don't care what didn't happen, what almost happened. Whoever was behind the wheel, whoever was in that car, whoever fled that scene. Um, yeah, we get it. This might not be who you are as a person, but, but it's, you yeah, did it's, it. It's part of the story. <laughs> you you it's, did it. Yeah, you, were, you were involved. It, right, right. It yeah. was like when people say, and, that's and, not and me. Send a no, message. it is you. That's not me, but you. But hey, yeah, it was you. You were there. You did it. it it's, you did it. Right. It is you. It's not. Yeah. Maybe it's not 100% you, but it's 4% you. <laughs> it's 3% you. It's something that's a part of your journey, a part of your story. It's, a, it's in your portfolio, uh, whether you like it or not, whether you're ashamed of it or not. Now, let me ask you, yeah. Uh, yeah. does it change the conversation? Because I don't know. I don't know. And I'm sure this story will continue to be updated uh, as we go along. As we speak, there'll be updates. Will it change your will it change your mind if it was a friend of relative of associate of Rice and not Rice himself driving the driving the car? It a bit? 
Yes. Drive, driving the car registered to him? Yes. No, yeah, that's, that's why, I mean, that's why I've qualified it every single time. And that's I know. why I have an asterisk next to regular, because we don't know ne- next to recklessly race, because we don't know whether or not he was behind the wheel. Um, seems like, I mean, one of those guys in that picture looks like him. Um, seems like he was at least there and fled the scene, which is also problematic and illegal. Um, will it change it if he wasn't driving? Slightly. Slightly, I mean, you know, yeah. Is your, is the, I mean, I, I guess it's not as bad if you were behind the wheel, but you still sitting right here. That person, like, honestly, the common sense should kick in even more. Like, bruh, I got too much to live for. I don't know about you, <laughs> but this, right. ain't, this, this ain't it. You know, like, slow down not, in my he, car. He probably, you know, like, you know, that's your car. You're the boss of that car. No, no. I mean, if you're drag racing, you're not thinking, I got too much to live for because you, you don't no. think anything's going to happen. You right, think because you want the thrill. You I got too much on the, the line. Yeah, I got too much. Yeah. I got too much on the line. I, I've yeah. got I've got value. I've got and my value is just going up. I've, I'm a rookie. My rookie year. We win the championship. Uh, I was so bold in the Super Bowl at the end of regulation. I went up to Patrick Mahomes said you missed me. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, man, I was open. <laughs> Mahomes is like sit down rookie. Shut up. I, well, I mean, you you're know, ready for overtime. Well, I, no, I'm glad you. I'm glad you. Uh, you know, kind of transition to on the field. Which, by comparison, we're talking about. We're literally talking about life or death. On the field yeah. is relatively trivial, uh, but nonetheless, talking about a, a a young player with a bright future. Like I said, set the record seemingly. for receptions in the postseason. Yeah, seemingly yeah. bright future. Uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes, number one receiver. Like that. That'll take you a long way. You know, and blowing it, maybe, potentially, possibly blowing it for what? For the, for a drag race? Well, uh, but you know what? I, I think, um, yeah, doing something stupid, it is stupid. But if I know the NFL and I know the Kansas City Chiefs, he's not blowing hmm. his career. That's fair. He's not his That's career. Fair. His career will not be over. That's fair. Uh, he will not be released. He will not be traded. Hell, he he might not even be disciplined. He got, not he not got, strongly. He disciplined. Yeah, not okay, strongly enough. Maybe a yeah, game. Yeah. Maybe a game. Sure. Uh, prove me wrong, NFL. I doubt it. I doubt it. No, you're right. A game or two. Okay. No, you're right. So he's got. You know, I don't think he has a history with the personal conduct policy, and he's not a repeat offender. So you're probably right. 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 So and and they got good lawyers. <laughs> they, got good, Rock, they got a good uh, governor. Uh, joking they got a about favorable those NFL lawyers. We know that they got a favorable they, governor. We fought, we've seen that already. Oh yeah. <laughs> they got a fan. They got a oh, fan yeah. in the governor's office. You know. So, but but that being said, even though yeah. I still expect him to be on the Chiefs, this is why I say, Mike, uh, the three peat things change from year to year, and so we always think we look at Patrick. Hey, as long as they have Patrick Mahomes, nope, that's not enough. Having Patrick Mahomes is not enough. As great as he is, best quarterback in the league, one of the best quarterbacks, count on one hand. I don't need more hands. And count on one hand, uh, <laughs> the amount of quarterbacks I've seen do things similar to or better than Patrick Mahomes. Not many. But still, mm-hmm. if you're going to try to three-peat, the, the reason you get to a, a back-to-back, because things, your talent plus things went in your favor. Talent plus favor. Uh, yeah. Not a lot of, not a lot of defections, not a lot of trades or you know different personnel. Some, but not a mass amount. But a three peat, it's it's not just the personnel part of it. It's the focus part of it. It's everybody. It's the alignment. And a three peat. Now that we've won two in a row, hey, let's say, let's say, hey, hey, we're talking about players on the roster. I ain't talking about the top five or top ten. I'm talking about like number twenty six or twenty seven on the roster. Hey, let's talk about my contracts. Let's talk about my let's talk about my contract. Let's talk about my role. Uh, I can do more things. You know, I'm being held back. I'm being overshadowed or or maybe I've or not bitterness at all. I've won my two. I got two. I'm good. Let me of more, right? Let me go, Isn't that Pat Riley? Yeah, let me Pat go somewhere Riley, else. The disease of more. That's Pat Riley, right? Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot. 
there's a lot that comes into it. So I'm just I'm saying that for, for you three P people, I'm talking about you, Michael Smith, you three P people. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm betting against you. I'm betting against you just because it's pretty much impossible. I'm it's, it's it's pretty much impossible. Just things. It's just not gonna. It's just not gonna work that way. It's I'll, not gonna fall I'll, in line like it always has. Like, the same ethic, the same spirit is not there in 2024. That was there in 2023. It's already gone. So now something unlikely, else needs to be created. Unlikely, far fetched, or the odds against impossible it? Yeah, strong. Sure. Impossible strong. I, yeah, impossible I, I was strong. Yeah. No. I, and listen, since we're talking just strictly football here, Rasheed Rice or not. I mean, they did sign Hollywood Brown. I know that doesn't impress you, but they did sign Hollywood Brown. And this is happening. Comedy. You know, you do a comedy you don't on Monday. Huh? You don't want this to ever happen. But if this is going to happen, it's happening prior to the draft in which there's the deepest receiver class in memory. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they were expected to address receiver anyway in the draft. So, um, I would think this one might hurt Rasheed Rice more than it hurts the Kansas City Chiefs. If we just talk professionally speaking. Um, yeah. But you're right. He may not. He may not be punished at all, or if he is, minimally. Uh, but more and than anything, you know what? I, ho- I hope he learned his lesson. And most important, Michael, just <laughs> you know, going back to the parental part. Now I'll, I'll let you get your thought off. You know, do as I say, not as I do. You know, I just some, just I hope more people learn a lesson from him. Don't learn the hard way. You know, learn, learn if, you, if you're young and you're a young athlete or you're just a young person behind the wheel and you're thrill seeking, like learn from this as opposed to learning from your own experience. I, I know experience is the best teacher, but in some cases, I'd rather learn from somebody else's experience. Yeah, sometimes plus, what is what what my man Cujo Goody said? Sometimes experience is the best teacher until you get your own plate. I hope you don't mind me eating off of yours. <laughs> so, That's good. I'm good. Yeah. And and in a way, I have to admit, in a way, I can't relate. Now, am I in my issues on the road? Uh, so, you know, some of my cars, uh, Honda Civics, and Prius. You also had a. You also had a. Uh, with this, back to the speeding thing, though. You also had a, a a a friend of yours tell you something that you told me that I use a lot that. Michael Holly's travel plans don't include other people. That's right. <laughs> that was, so yeah, that, that, that could help, help to mitigate the speeding. Yeah, if, uh, I yeah, think that was I all, think I'm just going to get yeah, it's yeah. I should be there in eight minutes. So eight minutes. Oh, forget about lights and traffic and right. everything else. I, I like think you it maxing should be collateral minutes, so, or something. Yeah, so yeah, get out the way. But I was going to say last thing uh, on, on the football yeah. part. You yeah. said things can change. Now we're both old enough to remember when Tyree Kill was having some personal issues with the Kansas City Chiefs, and it looked like it was mm. going to be over yeah. for Tyree Kill before this is almost this is like two, two, three years before the trade. Looked yeah. like it was going to be over for Tyree Kill even longer, and yeah. they drafted Miko Hardman right in the second almost round, an emergency, yeah, yeah, speed guy, and no, yeah. Tyree Kill stayed with the Kansas City yeah. Chiefs. They won yeah. a Super Bowl with Tyree Kill. Okay. Yeah. And and Miko yeah. Hardman never really became, you know, what they thought he would be in Kansas City, although he did right. catch the winning touchdown right. in the Super Bowl. But no, that's a, yeah, that's, so that's a good these call things out. these things can change quickly. Yeah. But and it's also not as easy to replace guys. Like they hit on Rashi Rice, doesn't mean they're gonna hit on the next guy. You know, like Patrick Mahomes wanted him. They developed the chemistry, got better as the year went on. That's not an easy thing uh, to replicate. But you talk about the disease of more. Everybody wants more money. They want more commercials. Uh, they want more podcasts. They want more shows. They want more books. They want to write their own book. Um, and speaking of books, as the Chiefs be- tr- seek to become the first repeat NFL champion since the 2003-2004 New England Patriots, uh, Bill Belichick is is uh, is doing a book. My first thought when I saw this was is Michael holding out on me. He's doing a book without Michael. <laughs> that, was the, that was the first thought I had. Um, and you're not holding on, out on me. Are you? No, 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 I'm not. Oh, I'm, said, playing. I'm playing. You told me that. You told me that. 
Okay. All right. I would have told you. The second, I the second thought I had is what kind of book do I want to see? Because I'm pre I'm consider this a pre-order. I am pre-ordering Bill Belichick's book right now. Um, before he's even started it. Um, the kind of book I want to see is not the kind of book I think most people are hoping for. I don't want Bill Belichick to write a definitive book or his version of a, 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 a look inside or behind the curtain of the Patriots dynasty. You don't? I, that's not what I want from Bill Belichick. Woo. That's not what I want from Bill Belichick. I, 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 I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying it can't be a sprinkle of that, you yeah. know, but I feel like we've gotten enough versions of the story to where whatever he writes is just going to be his version. It's probably going to be sanitized. It's probably going to be watered down. You know, I don't expect Bill Belichick to all of a sudden become, wait for it, an open book when it comes to the Malcolm Butler situation or anything else. Having said that, the book I do want to see from Bill Belichick and the one I think, you know him better than I do, the one I think he'd be most inclined to write would be a Paul Brown type book, a, a Bill Walsh, Bill Edge Walsh type book, or, 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 yeah, or a yeah. Steve Belichick, you know, football scouting methods type book, scouting like, methods. A, like, yeah, a, like, yeah. a, like a definitive book on X's and O's football knowledge uh, and, mm. and, and strategy and infrastructure okay. that, that I could see uh, you know, coaches passing down from generation to generation that that Bill Belichick would be proud to have on a bookshelf next to Steve Belichick's book. That's the kind of book I think he would be more inclined to write. And honestly, that's the one I prefer to see him write. Okay. All right. So we're actually saying the same thing in a way, but I'm going <laughs> to okay. take it. I'm going to take it somewhere else because you know this Belichick has a, a whole library. So family mm -hmm. family loves books this started with with mom, you know that book football scouting methods, you know, Bill Belichick was eight years old. Steve Belichick is doing the the typing he could hear in the next room. His father hunting and pecking typing and his mother on the edits and, and, and correct like strong edits, not just line by line, but like pushback edits. This doesn't make any sense, Steve. You need to rewrite this. You just talking to coaches. You need to talk to more people. You know that that kind of thing. So it was a family affair. They've always loved books. Uh, their their home in Annapolis just lined with books, books plural. So Bill Belichick doesn't need to be writing a book. Bill Belichick needs a series. It's like this is J.K. Rowling. This is uh, Robert Caro, the the political uh, uh, author, wrote many books on L.B.J. It was like a whole series. So I want a series. <laughs> Okay, because I want mm. that. You mentioned that Bill Walsh, that Paul Brown, that wonky X's and O's. I want that stuff. But now I want a little drama too. Give me a little Bravo. Got to bring a little Bravo in this. Little shout out Andy you Cohen. You ain't getting that from him. Okay. You ain't getting that from him. Come on. You, ain't, you, you oh, ain't getting that from him. You weren't. You weren't gonna get that from him. Oh, oh then okay. the dynasty. Till the, till the dynasty. Okay. Then the dynasty okay. happened. Okay. He's like, oh wait a minute. Right. What? Oh, wait a minute, because I can tell you who, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. <laughs> right. I can right. tell you for a fact. Yeah. Now, Robert Kraft should not be surprised by this. Robert Kraft has stuff on Bill Belichick. So therefore, Bill Belichick's got stuff on Robert Kraft. Robert Kraft is saying stuff about Belichick that Belichick doesn't want out there. So therefore, I know for a fact, mm. Mm. Robert Kraft, uh, that Bill Belichick has protected some information mm. about Robert Kraft that has not been out there. So, yeah, let's go. Is that in his best? <laughs> let's go. I just, all right. Say, you don't see him doing that. You don't think he's petty. He's got some petty. He's, I, he's got King Petty in him. You know he does. This is the dude who put Tom Brady injured right shoulder on the injury report for a decade. <laughs> Somebody yeah, decade. petty with us is petty with us is one thing. I don't know, man. Like, come I on. I don't know. I, look, I, I could be being naive, but like somebody got to be the bigger man, though. And so Tom Brady at what injured at what point at what point for 10 years 
But at what point does somebody say, hey, man, this, ain't, this, this is not a good look for all of us. Like, let's not reduce the dynasty to a bunch of mudslinging. And it's like, you know, and I, I, I could see a world, and again, maybe I'm, I don't know, you, you know I'm better than I do. I could see a world in which Belichick decides to actually take the high road when it comes to what? how this story is told or, and, and, and what, well, what's shared and what's but it's not. not just that. Somebody has to, like, are we, are we going to do another book or another project where now you have people trying to set the record straight on the back end and it's negative. Like, like the, the, how, do, how is the definitive dynasty? We're well, not the definitive dynasty. I shouldn't say that. But how is the most successful, the longest running dynasty in league history been reduced to, you know, uh, a, 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 ironically, <laughs> a, a, a war of words in the media, you know, and, and yeah. whose story are, yeah, are but we I to think believe? You know, that's why. That's why, really, I, 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 and it sounds crazy, and there's, there's some tongue-in-cheek when I say multiple books, but if you think about it, Bill Belichick has been in the NFL since he was 23, nonstop. Mm -hmm. So this is his first year out. That 2024 is going to be the first year out since 1975. So 75 to 2023, it was always football. So think about, like, all the stories. And some of the stories people say, ah, I mean, I really don't want to hear about the old Baltimore Colts or Belichick with the Lions, Belichick with the Broncos. But how about Belichick with Lawrence Taylor and the Giants and the mm -hmm. Super Bowl game plans? How about Bill Belichick in Cleveland with Art Modell and moving the franchise yeah. and becoming the Baltimore? No, he's got a, I mean, there's so he's, got a, he's a walking so encyclopedia. Much stuff. He's got he's got the, he's a walking the, the dynasty's great institution. Yeah, that's only part of his career. You're absolutely right. That's only but that's part only of part of it. Yeah, that's only one chapter. So, so yeah, I mean, of, there's of his career. He's got yeah. a lot to offer. He does. Can you imagine a Bill Belichick book tour? But by the way, uh, that, yeah, I'm available. <laughs> right for the record, for the for the record, run it. Want to run it back? Want to run it back? Uh, I'm available. When the book is written, can't talk about Bill Belichick and the Patriots without talking about the Jets. When the book is written on the 2024 New York Jets, uh, or when they do those like uh, those freezing cold take videos, you know, like when the teams when the teams keep receipts and they make these little oh, highlight shit. videos of all the talking right. heads. You've been in them. You've been uh, in, you've been in one or two of those. Yeah. You know, um, all the stuff that's been talked about the Jets over not only over the years but even just recently. Speaking of Nicole Hartman, I remember. You know, Nicole Hartman talked about the Jets being a being a joke and whatnot, and we we're like, "Yeah, it's the Jets." And we talked about Zach Wilson, like, "Yeah, it's the Jets." And like, "Hey, man, that Hassan Reddick trade." Now they lost Bryce Huff to the Eagles, but that Hassan Reddick trade. Hey, man. They they, they like are it? the they are the they are the n around crew this off season. Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I really like right. I really like some of these moves, man. I right, look, Tyron Smith got to stay healthy. Mike Williams got to stay healthy. Those are big ifs. Aaron Rodgers, first and foremost, above all, has to stay healthy. But I, I like the moves that they made, and let's see what Joe Douglas does with this tenth pick. Hell, maybe Robert Sala and Woody Johnson were having an animated conversation at the owners' meeting about who gonna yeah. speak first at the parade. I don't know what they were talking about, allegedly. But the, the Reddick the Redick pickup is a big one. That's a big one. Um, yeah, I mean, they pick up like Reddick. I, I really, yeah. And then on this, like this list, group. let me add to this list too. We got the left tackle, uh, Teron Smith. The right tackle, Morgan Moses. Yeah, right, he's missing. Nick is great. Thank you. They, 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 got, <coughs> they got Baltimore's they pretty much took Baltimore's line. They get, you know, Simpson. They get Simpson from Baltimore. They take Moses from Baltimore. Uh, yep. Just to rebuild, because they had, a, a like, one of the worst offensive lines, if not the worst offensive line in football last right. year. So they're serious about Aaron, protection of Aaron Rodgers. They bring in Mike Williams. Maybe with the 10th pick, who knows? They may take a wide Brock receiver. Bowers or Brock Bowers. They uh, take or, a weapon. Or Bowers. Like that's who the, knows? Who buzz. knows? I I like I like what they're doing, but this is the this is the only only hesitation. 
everything. They're all, Mike, they're old. <laughs> Everybody's, <laughs> yeah. if, if they're not old, they're just all hanging on. But they just one, it's like small injury away. All these guys are good players, but there's like a yeah, but. Like, okay, Moses is 33, Smith is 33. Smith hadn't played a full season in like, you know, nine years. Um, you know, Mike Williams always dealing with injuries, coming off an injury right now. Aaron Rodgers, 40 years old, uh, the Achilles. So they, I like the names. I like what they're doing, but uh, offensively. Now, Reddick, I didn't realize that Reddick, like, you, you realize it's Reddick and Miles Garrett, the only two guys? With double digit sacks the last four years. Is that right? Yeah, those two. Double wow. digit sacks. Last so, four. Wow. Yeah. So he's been, he's very consistent. He's also looking for a new contract. So if I'm the Jets, if this, to stay out of the Jets joke line, because there are always so many jokes just at the ready for the, the Gotham Comedy Club, the New York Jets, you always. <laughs> If to stay out of that, just sign him to a new contract. I'd sign, I'd, I'd sign him to an extension tomorrow. Just but even to get if they that. Don't. Even if they don't, they get, a, they get a compensatory pick, which probably cancels out what they gave up for him. I know, you but know? I'm saying, like, with, it's just all, you have, all, all, on this you have year. all these guys, you just don't yeah. want to cut out. It could, the, be, it could be combustible, the variables. Cut it could out be the noise yeah. in New York. 27 we saw sacks how that and 24 tackles for loss. The past two years. Here's another stat for you: uh, Reddick, Micah Parsons, and Josh Allen. Not the quarterback, obviously. The Jaguars. Josh Allen. Only players to record six or more pressures in eight games last year. Uh, dude's a game wrecker. Wow. Um, dude's a game wrecker. Uh, as once again, they're gonna be interesting. What, like whether they're good or not, whether they're in the playoffs or not, they always interesting. You know. I wouldn't mind a, uh, I wouldn't mind another hard knocks with the New York oh, Jets. Don't say it. No, I wouldn't mind another one. That's a hell of a move right there. Yeah, no, I they can't wait to see what they do in the draft. All right, let's uh, let's take a little break, little break here, and uh, get into some hoops action. The hoops world is on fire right now, Michael. Yeah, on fire. So much. There's so much to get into. Including, including the uh, the woman on your shirt, leading some action and comments. Hey, thank you for watching, brother from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on SiriusXM Channel 85.